Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to talk about the relationship between intensity and power. Any object that produces electromagnetic radiation produces a certain amount of energy per unit time and it outputs that energy so that's known as power, power produced by that object. So stars produce power, light bulbs produce power or any, any object, even a brick produces a certain amount of power, a certain amount of energy per unit time that is emanated from the object because all objects in the universe produce electromagnetic radiation. So, how do we then calculate the intensity at a distance? To do that, we use this equation right here, that the intensity is equal to the power of the source divided by the area over which it spreads. Now, typically, objects will spread the radiation in all directions, radially outward, so that it moves out as a wave outward, and the wave front will be a spherical-shaped object getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So when we take the power of the source, let's say here's a source right there, it's emanating energy in all directions, and so let me indicate that by, so energy is going in all directions like this. What we then do is we take the power produced by that object and divide it by the surface area of the, of the sphere over which it spreads. And the farther it spreads, the larger that surface area, so the larger the denominator, in other words, the intensity drops off as a function of the surface area of the radiation wave as it spreads out into space. So here we have an example. Let's say that I have the nearest star, Alpha Centauri, which is about 4.3 light years from us, and we want to know the intensity of the light when it reaches us. Well, assuming that it's 4.3 light years away, which is about 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters, or about 9.46 trillion kilometers, what will be the intensity of the light when it reaches us? Well, what we do is we say that the intensity is equal to the power of the source divided by the area, and since the area is going to be a spherical shaped object, it's going to be 4 pi r squared. That's the surface area of a sphere. And so then all we have to do is put in the power of the source and the radius of the sphere. So the intensity will be equal to. Now what would be the power emanated from a star like Alpha Centauri? Well, it's very similar to, the, to the, our star, the Sun. So let's just estimate it to be about 4 times 10 to the 26th watts. So that's joules per second, that many joules per second emanated from the star. We divide that by 4 pi times the radius, and we found the radius right here, which is 9.46 times 10 to the 15th meters. So we get watts per meter squared. Hmm, let's see here. Oh, that's because this should be squared. There we go. So we get watts per meter squared. So that would be the intensity. It's in watts per meter squared. All right. So let's go ahead and divide that. So I have 4 e to the 26th divided by 4, divided by pi, and divided by 9.46e to the 15th, and we have to square the number equals, and there it is. The intensity of the light coming from Alpha Centauri is 1.12 times 10 to the minus 6 watts per square meter. That's, of course, very low intensity, and that's why stars, because they're so far away, just look like little, little you know, lights in the sky, very, very, um, what would say, not very bright at all, of course. Now, another way to look at the electromagnetic radiation is that it's made up of photons. So what that means is that photons are streaming away from any light source or any electromagnetic radiation source, so if the intensity is that many watts per square meter, how many photons are we receiving on every square meter of the Earth from Alpha Centauri? Well, the energy contained within each photon, the energy for one photon, is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, which is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength of that photon. So each photon contains that much energy. And for visible light, the wavelength is around 500 nanometers. So what we can then say is that the energy of a photon is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, that's joules times seconds, times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and times the wavelength of visible light, which would be about 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So that would be the energy in a single photon. Well, let's go ahead and calculate that and see what we get. 
So 6.626e to the 34 minus times 3e to the 8 divided by 500e to the 9 minus equals, and we get 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. All right. Now, of course, what is a joule per second? So what we have to do then is divide this, so what we can say is that the number of photons, the number of photons that hit the Earth, or one square meter of the Earth, every second, the number of photons will be equal to the energy contained within the light coming from Alpha Centauri, which is 1.12 times 10 to the minus 6 joules. That's how, many, how much energy is deposited on every square meter surface, every second on the Earth, coming from Alpha Centauri, and we divide that by the energy per photon, which is 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon. And that will tell us how many photons we receive from Alpha Centauri on every square meter surface. So we take the inverse of that, and we multiply it times 1.12 e to the 6 minus, and we get 2.82 times 10 to the 12th. 2.82 times 10 to the 12th and that would be photons. That's how many photons arrive on the Earth for every square meter surface on the Earth every second from Alpha Centauri, a star that's 4.3 light years away. Now, if when we look at the star, and for example, we have the energy entering our eye, how many of those photons enter our eye every second? Well, notice the eyeball is, of course, much smaller than a square meter, so we need to think about the pupil, that would be the opening, in which we receive the energy, the sunlight, or in this case, the starlight that we're looking at. So the number of photons entering the eye is equal to the number of photons that hit every square meter surface of the Earth, which is 2.82 times 10 to the 12 photons, times the ratio of the surface area, or the opening of the eye, the pupil of the eye, divided by the area of one square meter. So one square meter, and how big is the pupil of the eye? I think the diameter is about, well, when it's fully dilated, it's about four millimeters, and so the radius would be two millimeters, so the area would be pi times 0 0.002 meters squared. Of course, I have to make that one square meter. So that would be the radius, pi r squared would be the area of the eyeball, of the pupil, and through which the, the, uh, the, the light enters, divided by one square meter, times the number of photons that hit the Earth per square meter. So times pi and times 0 0.002 squared equals, and that means, oh, I have to convert that. 3.54 times 10 to the seventh photons that enter our eye every second when we look at Alpha Centauri coming from Alpha Centauri, which is kind of interesting. So here again we have an illustration of the duality of light. We tend to think of electromagnetic radiation or light as simply waves traveling through space where we have oscillations in the electric field and oscillations in the magnetic field, but when it comes down to it, Light and electromagnetic radiation is, sup is, is made up of small little packages of energy called photons, and when we then calculate the energy that contains, is contained within each photon, which is done in this fashion right here, we can actually calculate how many photons come at us when electromagnetic radiation reaches us. This can be radio waves, it can be visible light, it can be gamma rays, it doesn't matter. There's always consists of photons, we can actually calculate the number of photons that reach us. And when we look at a star like Alpha Centauri, we have this many, that's 35 million photons entering our eye every single second when we're looking at Alpha Centauri. Kind of amazing when you think about it, but that is what we mean by electromagnetic radiation and the power and energy contained within it. And that's how we do that.